In this lesson, we're going to move on to talking about another dynamic array function, rand array. And rand array in its most basic form allows us to generate a random series of numbers. And we're also going to discuss in this lesson the rand between function. Now, rand between isn't a dynamic array function, but it does work very similar to rand array. So I wanted to show you both of these so you can see a clear contrast between the two to enable you to determine which one is going to suit your needs. So let's start out with the dynamic array function rand array. Now you can see here we have a small data set for Big Drop Bungie. Now they are a bungee jumping company and these are the people who are going to be doing jumps for the day. Now we want to determine the jump order and we want to make this completely random. So effectively, I want to assign a number 1 to 20. And I think we have 20 people in this list. Let's just check. Yes, the count is 20. So I want a number 1 to 20 next to each of these. And I want it to be generated randomly. And we can then sort this so we can see the order of the jumpers. Now, ordinarily, and before we had the rand array function, we would do this using rand between. But let me show you the problem with rand between. So let's type in equals rand between. Now rand between only has two arguments, bottom and top. So this is going to generate numbers between a bottom number and a top number that we specify. So if I've got 20 jumpers, I want my bottom number to be 1 and my top number to be 20. And if I close the bracket and if I hit enter, we can then drag this down but check out what happens. You can see that some of these numbers are repeated. For example, we have a number four here and a number four just here. We have two eights at the top. So there's nothing you can do with rand between to tell it to generate unique numbers between one and 20. It's just gonna randomly generate them and you run the risk of getting duplicates. So this isn't particularly helpful for us because we want unique values. So this is where rand array could help us in this particular scenario. So let's type in rand array. Now rand array is similar, it's going to generate random numbers, but we have a few more arguments in here. So it's asking us for rows. Now if you had a lot of rows, you could type in count A and get it to count the rows for you. So let's just do that, why not? Count A, even though I know there are 20 here, just so you can see how you would do that. Comma. Number of columns. Well, we're only outputting into one column. Our minimum number is going to be 1. Our maximum number is going to be 20. But then we can define if we want to return a decimal number or an integer. Now, an integer is a whole number. Now, if I was to choose integer, let's just do true, close the bracket and hit enter. It's generated the numbers, but check it out again. We still have the same problem. So we have 19 just here and 19 just here. We have two threes in here. So it's still not giving me that unique list. So what's better here is to change this true on the end to a false to generate decimal numbers. Because now, if you take a look at two which would supposedly be the same, like these, nine, you can see that when we increase the decimals, they're actually different. So we can use these numbers now to define our jump order. Now, the easiest thing I find to do here is if we select all of our numbers, Control C and Control Shift V to copy directly over the top. That's going to remove the rand array formula from underneath and it's just going to leave these numbers. So now we can simply do a sort. So if I select the numbers, right click, let's go to sort, and I'm going to say do smallest to largest. Now I wanted to sort the jumpers as well, not just this column. So I'm going to say expand the selection and click on sort. And now you can see we have the jump order because it's using the decimal value to determine the jump order and it's not just recognizing these two for example as a number nine. So there we have our jump order determined and if you really wanted to make this look neater you could take these decimal places back down and there you have the actual order. So that's how the rand array function works. Let's take a look at rand between and a couple of ways that I like to use this because I find that rand between is great if you want to do things like generate a sample data set. So when you're trying to maybe learn Excel or work through Excel, it's always nice to have a data set to work with. 
And I use Rambetween a lot to just quickly generate numbers that I can play around with to practice my Excel skills. So you can see here I've created a little table of employees. And if you want a quick list of employee names to copy and paste into Excel, you can use Copilot or ChatGPT to generate 20 or so names. Now I want to generate a salary for each of these employees. So I'm going to use Rambetween. Now remember, this is just sample data that we're creating. So I'm going to say the bottom salary is 25,000 and the top salary is 60,000. Close the bracket, hit enter, and Excel is going to generate a bunch of random salaries for me. And I can take those decimal places down if I want. Now, if I wanted these to be whole numbers, you can see they're sort of a little bit random. In general, people's salaries would be 48,000 as opposed to 48,585. This is where we could add onto the front of the formula M round. And we could say that we want the multiple to be 1,000. Close the bracket, hit enter, and then we can drag this formula down. So those now look a little bit neater. Now, another thing you need to remember about Rand between is that it's what we call a volatile function. So these numbers will constantly update as we do other things in the spreadsheet. Now, if you don't want that to happen, again, you can just press Control C, Control Shift V to paste over the top and those numbers will stick. Now, what about if I want to assign departments for each of these employees? And I have the departments listed out over here and I kind of just want to assign these randomly. Well, this is where we can use choose and rand between. So choose is a lookup function. We can use it with rand between to get a really nice result. So our bottom number, well, the way that you need to look at this is we have four departments. So our bottom number is one and our top number is four. Close the bracket. Because what's going to happen here is because we've used RAM between, Excel is going to assign a random number from one to four to each of these employees. And then we use the choose function to assign meaning to those numbers. So if it's got a number one, it's going to be HR. Number two, finance. Number three, sales. Number four, marketing. So that's what we need to define now. When there's a one in the cell, return HR. And we want to lock that. When there's a two, return finance. When there's a three, return sales. And when there's a four, return marketing. Let's close it off, hit enter. And now when we double click to copy down, we have our random departments. Once again, we can do control C, control shift V to copy that over the top. And the final usage here is to generate random dates. So we can use rand between with the date function. So this time, the bottom number, we want to go straight into date. So let's say these people were hired between 2005, let's say January the 1st. Let's close off date, comma, and the top number. Again, we're going to use date. And this time, our top number is going to be 2022, uh, December and the 31st. Let's close off date and close off RAM between. So effectively, what this formula is going to do is it's going to generate a random list of dates between the 1st of the 1st, 2005 and the 31st of the 12th, 2022. Let's hit enter and then we can double click to copy down. And don't forget that because this is a volatile function, if you want all of these to just stay as they are, then we need to do a copy and paste values trick. So control C. And then if you're using Excel 365, you can use the new shortcut control shift V to simply paste the values over the top. So that's pretty cool as well. Control C, control shift V to paste it over the top. So very quickly using RAM between and a couple of other formulas, you can start to generate your own sample data can be really useful in many situations. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.